Welcome back. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. In this video, I'm going to talk about color addition and color subtraction for a physical science class. So this will be relevant for um, the week 32 material in the course. So first off, let's start about just what we see actually what's going on here. Uh, the visible light spectrum is part of the light spectrum that is what we actually see. So our eyes detect red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Basically the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. This is the colors that our eyes can detect. So of this region here, red is the longest wave. So it's the longest wavelength and it has the lowest energy. And uh, violet would be the shortest wave, and has the highest energy. We should mention real quick too though, when it comes to our eyes, we don't see every single color equally. We tend to see greens and yellows a little bit better than the reds and the violets. In fact, we don't see violet very well at all. So anyway, what we see actually then, when we think about what's going on, our eyes are taking in a bunch of light, a lot of photons coming in. So if, if something is red, that means that red is bouncing off that and coming back to you. So again, the big idea is, you know, right now, I got a blue shirt on, what does that mean? That means that when light hits my shirt, the blue light bounces off, but the other light doesn't bounce off. And so the blue light that bounces off would go into your eye and be like, oh, his shirt looks blue, all right? When you see something that's white, that's all the wavelengths. You can think like the whole rainbow hitting you. However, you don't need to have all of them. In a few seconds, we'll cover that. So what is black? Nothing coming off that. So if you see something black, what that means is all the light that hits that material is getting absorbed until it's not bouncing off. So it turns out that we just need to actually have three lights to see uh, white light. So red, blue, and green. So as long as you have red light and blue light and green light coming into our eyes, we interpret that as white light. So um, basically, it's just think of it like the rainbow. On the rainbow, as long as you have one light from one side of the rainbow, another light from another end, and one light in the middle, we interpret that as white. So again, red is the long wave, blue is the short wave, and green is the middle. The reason it's not violet is because we don't see violet very well. So pretty much as far as your eyes go, like blue is pretty much, uh, I mean, we can see violet, but um, our eyes are just much more sensitive to blue. So, so again, I'm not trying to unteach everything you learned about from elementary school with painting, but when it comes to color addition, the adding of light, we don't use yellow. We use red, blue, and green. Those are the primary colors that we use. And the ones you use in elementary school are the secondary colors in this class here. They are the painting colors, all right? So when it comes to color addition, in order to make light, what you see, it comes down to adding these three colors together. So if you think about like uh, cables that plug into like a, a monitor or plug into a projector, there are RGB cables, red, green, blue cables. So it's uh, giving off red, blue and green light to get the colors we see. So if I go onto Microsoft Word here and say, let me change the color of something. So here we go, let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna change it. We want more colors, give me more colors to choose from. You'll see that inside here, what am I doing? I'm actually changing how much red, how much green, how much blue are coming off of this. So if I say I want lots of red and I want lots of green coming off, it turns out to be yellow. And why is it yellow? Because again, here we have the rainbow right here. So think about this rainbow and what you see is actually gonna be an average. And so if you have red and you have green, between red and green is yellow. And so we would see yellow is what we would see. Anyway, so again, when it comes to color addition, the adding of light together, the primary colors are red, blue, and green. The painting colors, the ones used in elementary school, are be the secondary colors. There'll be a combination of those. So when you mix, red and green together, what you see is yellow. When you mix blue and green together, you're gonna to see cyan, and when you have blue and red come together, that's magenta. So, um, again, these are your primary color school colors from elementary school. So you would just interpret this magenta from a long time ago as red, you would've called it red. This cyan here, you would've called blue, and this would've been yellow. And so we'll get to color subtraction in a few seconds and explain why you see what you see. So, a little bit of color math here for us here. So, what if you have red and green light added together? What do you see? Red plus green, red and green makes yellow. What if you have red and blue added together? Red plus blue makes magenta. What if you have green plus magenta? Well, technically, 
Magenta is actually two colors. Magenta is the addition of red and blue. So that's actually saying like green plus red plus blue. And if we have all the colors, you're gonna see that's white. So blue plus yellow, well blue is just blue. Yellow is actually two colors, it's not just one color. Yellow is red and green mixed together. So blue plus red plus green, this is gonna equal white light again as well. So when we're adding colors, we're adding towards white. So the addition of colors in light adds towards white. Back in elementary school, the addition of paint subtracts. Painting, when you're really, when you're painting, you're subtracting colors out, all right? If you paint with something that's blue, what's the blue paint supposed to do? The blue paint is supposed to absorb other colors. It subtracts light so that nothing else comes off it, all right? And so when you add a bunch of paint together, what do you get? Some brownish, blackish color. Why? Because every single time you add a new paint, it takes out another color. So with color addition, with light, as you add colors together, you approach white. And as you would paint, as you add more colors, you approach black because you're subtracting more colors out. So color subtraction, this is to say, what do we have left over? So when you paint, you're just taking out colors. So white, W, is going to be red plus green plus blue. In this class here, we're just going to use these three colors. It simplifies things down too for color addition, color subtraction. So if we say white, we mean red, green, blue light. So white light minus red light, what do we have left over? We still have green plus blue. So what color is green plus blue? That's gonna be cyan. So white light, that's gonna be red plus green plus blue. Taking out green light, what do we have left over? We have red plus blue, which in this class would be magenta. White minus cyan light, or white minus cyan. So white is red plus green plus blue. Subtracting so off cyan, cyan is actually two colors. Cyan is what two colors? Cyan is gonna be green plus blue. And this is gonna equal, what do we have left over? Red. White minus magenta. White is red plus green plus blue. Subtracting so off magenta, magenta is red plus blue. What do we have left over? We have green light coming off that. So again, color subtraction is the idea that something will take something out. So if you have a shirt that looks yellow, so you can think of it like your shirt under normal conditions looking yellow. What does that mean? That means when white light, which is just red, green, and blue, come down and hit that thing that's normally yellow, it's gonna take out any blue. And what's gonna bounce off, it's gonna be red and green. My shirt is blue. What does that mean? That means that when yellow light or red or green light come and hit my shirt, what happens? That red and green light gets absorbed and doesn't bounce off it. So when all the colors come down and hit my shirt, red, green, and blue, only blue bounces off. And the relevance is too, you can think about just in the summer, wearing a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. When you wear a white t-shirt, it'll keep you cool. Wearing a black t-shirt will make you hot. Why? Because the white shirt bounces off all the light. So the light hits that white t-shirt, bounces off. The black t-shirt, when it gets hit, absorbs the light. And so uh, the black t-shirt is gonna be taking in the energy and absorbing and getting hot. Again, a simple size for a project that you can do with your kids someday is take different colors of shirts, put them outside, and put a thermometer inside each one of them. Lay them out in the sun for an hour, see which shirt gets the hottest. Whichever shirt gets the hottest is absorbing more energy from the sun. And then you can find out which colors that the sun actually produces in the highest quantity. All right, so does the red shirt or the blue shirt or the green shirt get the hottest? All right, because then I can tell you what color is hitting it the most, which one's being absorbed the most. All right, so again, let's think about this again. What, if we have a red shirt, what's it gonna absorb? What colors does a red shirt absorb? It's gonna absorb anything that's not red. So up on the color wheel up here, red is gonna absorb its opposite. So red's gonna absorb cyan, all right? Green will absorb magenta. Yellow will absorb blue. So red's gonna absorb cyan. So it'll absorb cyan color, which is really just green plus blue light. Anything that's green or blue for a red shirt gets absorbed. What's it reflect? Red. Let's highlight those so it's easier to see that. All right, what's a green shirt gonna absorb? Green shirt's gonna absorb, well, what's the opposite of green? Green's opposite is magenta. So it's gonna absorb 
magenta light, which again, magenta is really red plus blue. And what do you see then? You're gonna see green, because the green shirt reflects green. So what's a cyan shirt, a cyan shirt absorb? Opposite of cyan is red. So for cyan, it's gonna absorb red, which means what's it gonna give off? It's gonna reflect cyan light. And cyan light is what two colors, green plus blue. Now, the reason why these here are the painting colors is because when you paint, you wanna take out only one color at a time, all right? If you paint with blue and red or green, that actually takes out two colors every time you put it on there. That pigment absorbs multiple ways. The reason we choose these as the primary painting colors is because they take out just one color of light. When you paint with magenta, since magenta is red and blue, it'll just only take out any green light. The purpose of painting with cyan light is to take out anything that is red. So go back to your elementary school again. What do you get when you mix blue paint, which was back then cyan, if you take cyan paint and you mix it with yellow paint, what color did you get? So if you mix cyan paint, cyan paint, the job of the cyan is to do what? It's supposed to take out any red hitting it. What's the job of the yellow paint? The yellow paint can reflect red and green, but it absorbs blue. So if you mix cyan paint, which takes out red, and you mix it with yellow paint, which takes out blue, what color do you have left? Just green. So mixing cyan paint with yellow paint made green light show off because basically it got rid of the blue and the red. So what's a black strobe absorb? A black strobe absorbs white light, all of them. All right, and what's reflect? None, so no light. So again, that's what a black shirt is, is basically is a shirt that absorbs all the different colors of light. Again, and the application this is also the idea that how does this work on Broadway when we wanna make people invisible on the stage? We can basically make people look not present by just changing the color of light showing on that person. All right, so let's see. So if we have some spotlights that are red and green turned on and the shirt that they're wearing normally looks white. So the person's wearing a white shirt, they go onto the stage. We have red and green spotlights on them. What colors are absorbed by this? None, because a white shirt does not absorb any colors. So what colors do we see? Well, the red and the green, which we look at, it turns the person into yellow. It makes that shirt yellow. We can make a white shirt any color we want to make it. And think about that. If you're wearing a white t-shirt or if you have a white piece of paper, we can make that any color. No matter what color we shine onto it, we can make it that color. So if you had a white piece of paper and you, and you put a green laser on it, it would look green. If you put a red laser on it, it looks green. So again, this is something you probably don't think about too, but when you go to the movie theater, what color is the screen? You might be tempted to say black, it's not. The movie theater screen is white. The movie theater screen is white so they can bounce every single color off of it, all right? So if you have a shirt that is normally yellow, what does yellow normally absorb? What color does it take out? Well, yellow reflects red and green, all right? So red and green are reflected which means that what? Blue is absorbed. I hope you can put that next one. So we call it absorbed blue. Any blue light that hits it's gonna be absorbed. So if we shine red light and blue light onto the person, what's gonna to happen to this yellow shirt? They, they came onto the stage wearing yellow. We wanna make them look different. What do we do? We turn on a red and blue spotlight. The blue, when it hits the person's shirt, gets taken out. So it's going to be no blue coming off it, but we still have the red that's coming off it. So we can make that yellow shirt look red. So if we put red light and blue light onto a yellow shirt, the shirt actually goes from yellow to looking red. And so we can actually change your costume by just changing the colors too. So shirts normally cyan. What does cyan reflect? Cyan reflects green and blue. So what's it going to be absorbed? Red. No red will come off that thing. So what color do we see? What's left? green. Green light comes off this. So again, back to this idea of making someone invisible coming onto the stage. Let's say someone's again wearing that yellow shirt. If you put blue light onto it, again, yellow only reflects red and green. It does not reflect blue. It absorbs blue. So if we shine blue onto the shirt, but it can't bounce off of blue, what do we see? Black. That means that there's no color bouncing off it. 
so that person would be able to sneak on the stage and not be very visible. Now, again, he's not going to be completely invisible, but again, if you think about our eyes, we're drawn to things that like are bouncing off lots of light. So if a person is like, if there's lights on, but someone is like really dull in color, we're not going to look at that. So ways people can sneak onto stage in Broadway is just, we're going to have some spotlights on and have you wearing a costume that absorbs the light. So you're dark. And then all of a sudden we put a spotlight on you that actually shows up, shows you. So for example, this person walks on the stage with a yellow shirt. We have blue light hitting the whole stage. As a person walks on, they're dark. You don't see them. And then all of a sudden, we change the colors to actually have like uh, red and green lights come on. So we make it white light. And all of a sudden, boom, this person disappears out of nowhere. All right. Um, God's peace. Have a great day.